This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we'll be working with the Portrait of Hercules JPEG file. Now this is a photo of a partial Greek sculpture of the hero Hercules, or in the true Greek, Heracles, taken at the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art several years ago. Now, the first issue is that the photo is horizontal when it really should be vertical. So that's easy to adjust. Image, rotate, 90 degrees left. We'll fix that for me. Command zero or control zero, if you're a PC user, will fit the image in the screen space. Since I'm only working with one file at a time, I really don't need the project bin, so I'm gonna collapse it to give me as much space as possible for the image. And I'm just going to use the Command-0 or Control-0 keyboard shortcut again to resize the image to the newly available screen space. In this lesson, we're going to use the Brightness Contrast effect to adjust the contrast in a specific area of the image. The Brightness Contrast effect isn't really intended for global image tonal adjustments. For those, it's much better to use the Shadow and Highlight effects or the Levels effect. Brightness contrast is really best used in smaller areas. Specifically, in this image, we're gonna use it only on the bust itself, only on the sculpture. To do that, I have to select a specific area of the image. And since the image is significantly different than anything around it, a really quick tool to use is simply the Quick Selection tool. The Quick Selection tool is a brush. It effectively allows you to paint on a selection. You can adjust the size of the brush using the left and right bracket keys. Those are the ones to the right of the P key in your keyboard. The right bracket key makes the brush larger. The left bracket key makes it smaller. You learned about making selections in another lesson, so this is just a quick refresher. And with the brush at approximately 125 pixels in size, I'm just going to start drawing around the interior of his face. You'll notice as I'm doing this, the expansion that is occurring along the border of the selection. So the selection border is getting larger as I drag my quick select tool over different areas of the image. Now, what you've gotta be careful of is this. What the tool's doing is making a comparison between the center of the tool and the area around it. If your tool is too large, it compares too large an area and expands the selection much too greatly. I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna make my brush smaller, and this is now about 35 pixels, and I'm just going to enlarge a smaller area. Notice I made the same mistake. So you gotta be a little careful. You can always undo the areas you're selecting by holding down the Option key, that would be the Alt key for PC users, and dragging the tool over an area that you want to deselect. Like that. And it really seems to be a living tool. It really does seem to adjust as you give it more information to analyze. That's pretty good, actually. Maybe a little bit at the bottom I want to grab onto, but it's really pretty cool. I'm going to use Refine Edge very quickly. You learned in another lesson. I've got the black background so I can see the edge. I'm just going to increase the smoothness of this so it's a little softer around the edges. And because I'm gonna do a tonal adjustment, I'm gonna feather this very, very slightly, maybe a half a pixel, just so it's a softer edge. That's usually helpful when I make tonal adjustments so that the changes don't have a really harsh edge between the area I'm correcting and the area that I'm not correcting. Well, that's pretty good, that'll work. So I'll choose Enhance, Adjust Lighting, Brightness, Contrast. The brightness contrast sliders are pretty straightforward. You have two sliders. The first one adjusts the brightness of the area that you have selected. The contrast slider increases the variation in dark to light areas of the area that you have selected. So the contrast slider can either reduce contrast or it can increase it. Now in this case, I'd like to increase the contrast a little bit, and I'm gonna go to about 25 or 30. I'd also like to decrease the brightness a little bit so that the image is a little darker. So I'm gonna take the brightness down to negative 10. And as you can see from the preview, I'm gonna turn the preview off for a second. That's the original. 
That's the previewed image. There's more variation in the dark and light areas, and the overall bust is considerably darker than it used to be. You can go as far as you like. I mean, you can reduce the brightness a great deal. But as you do, you'll notice that it completely changes the overall effect of the image. You could increase the contrast, so it's a great deal of variation. But after a certain point, it really becomes completely non-believable. It won't look like it's actually in this environment. So once again, I'm just going to go to about maybe negative 15 is a good choice for this. And then I'm going to reduce the contrast back down to about 30 or so. So once again, with preview off the original, that's the edited one. So the contrast and brightness of the image have been adjusted. The image is now standing out a little more. It's a little more intense, but it hasn't been changed so much that it seems completely unrealistic. It still seems that it could be existing in this same environment. I'll press OK. I'm going to select, deselect to remove the selection around this. And we can see the overall finished effect. So it's better than it was before. I could probably go back in further and increase the contrast even a little more if I wanted to. But this is a pretty good setting. Keep in mind that like with every other adjustment, good and bad is entirely up to you. You have absolute and total control over the pixels in the image. They'll have whatever values assigned that you choose to assign to them. There isn't a right and wrong. There isn't a universal correct setting. You have to use your judgment to figure out what works best for you in this situation. I could take this the exact opposite way and make this completely seem different than this environment. And if that's my goal, that's perfectly fine. You really, before you start correcting an image, should have an idea in your head of what you want a good image to be, what you think a good image is, or what you think a successful result will be. And that really should be the goal you keep in your head as you're correcting and as you're making your enhancements. Once again, I'm going to save the file. File save. Not a problem at all. All same defaults. Saving in the working files folder. Once again, it's a JPEG. It's going to keep the same settings I had previously, which is at the maximum quality. Okay. And that concludes this enhancement.